Hello students, welcome to this video. This is the second video in a series of four video in which we are helping you to ma master the art of answer writing. In the previous video, you learned about the three directives that help you in answer writing in mains examination. In this video, we are going to discuss two other very important directives. The first directive that we are going to discuss is critically analyze and the second directive we are going to analyze is what we are going to see is evaluate. These two are one of the most favorite directives that UPSC asks almost in every question or almost in every paper. All right, you can see many past year question paper where they have seen evaluate this or critically analyze this. These two directives are very important to get good marks in your mains answer writing. Chaliye. Let us first begin the first directive that is critically analyze. So, as you can see the word critically analyze, this make word hai critically. Many a times, jo student pehle answer writing practice nahi karte ya, jo students pehle directives ke baare mein pata nahi karte, they are not able to understand what the word critically actually means. And they take it synonymous for what? Criticism. So the first and the foremost thing that you should remember about critically analyze is that critically analyze does not mean that you have to criticize something. Critically means that you have to give a deeper insight. And how you are going to give the deeper insight? What you have to do in critically analyze is not to criticize, but first you have to provide the answer a form of subjectivity. This critically analyze is a subjective question. All right, you are the one who is critically analyzing aspect. This subjective is why every aspirant has a different way of critically evaluating or critically analyzing something. And because it is different from each and every student, there is an inherent subjectivity. Your critical analysis may be different from your friend's critical analysis and therefore no critical analysis is good or bad. Only thing is that you have to justify how you are critically analyzing it. So it is a subjective answer writing. Then as part of the procedure to answer the question related to critically analyze, what you have to do is you have to break the topic in hand into components. If you have a question, you have parts break it in parts. उस क्वेश्चन के कितने पार्ट्स हैं उसमें उसको ब्रेक करो एंड देन व्हाट यू हैव टू डू इज यू हैव टू शो एन इंटरकनेक्शन बिटवीन द पार्ट्स विद शोइंग द इंटरकनेक्शन बिटवीन द पार्ट्स नेक्स्ट थिंग दैट यू हैव टू डू इन क्रिटिकल एनालिसिस इज दैट यू हैव टू प्रोवाइड फॉर एंड अगेंस्ट आर्ग्यूमेंट्स फॉर ईच ऑफ द कंपोनेंट जो कंपोनेंट आप एग्जामिन कर रहे थे जो कंपोनेंट आप एनालिसिस कर रहे थे जिसका उस कंपोनेंट के फॉर एंड अगेंस्ट आर्ग्यूमेंट्स प्रोवाइड करने हैं अलोंग विद स्टैब्लिशिंग द कनेक्शन बिटवीन ईच कंपोनेंट और राइट आफ्टर यू स्टैब्लिश फॉर एंड अगेंस्ट आर्ग्यूमेंट फॉर ईच पार्ट यू हैव टू कंक्लूड द आंसर टू द क्वेश्चन स्टार्टिंग विद क्रिटिकल एनालिसिस वाइल यू आर कंक्लूडिंग यू शुड नॉट जस्ट फोकस ऑन आइदर द प्रो आर्ग्यूमेंट्स और द अगेंस्ट आर्ग्यूमेंट्स all right you don't have to either focus entirely on four arguments or entirely on against argument what you have to do is you have to take a balanced approach lekin you are always advised to take a position if you think that of a particular question the four arguments are more heavier than the against arguments then explicitly say that ki since the pros overpower the cons therefore the argument stands or you can take the four case and if you think that it has more loopholes and negative consequences then you criticize it but in a very mild manner the criticism has to be mild or the appraisal has to be mild because in this question you are showing both faces you are showing both पहलू दिखा रहे हो that there is a good, there is a bad. It may be possible that good may be slightly better than bad, or bad may be slightly more than good. In both the cases, take a mild manner. Say that yes, since the positives are more than the negatives, the case stands. However, however, there are also negative consequences which need to be corrected. All right, so you are taking a balanced approach, even taking a position. All right, like for example, for example. There is a question, critically analyze the proposed surrogacy regulation bill. The question is, critically analyze the proposed surrogacy regulation bill. This question ka critical analysis, her student ka alag hoga. So what you have to do as part of the procedure, 
first you have to see what is the topic that you have to analyze the topic is proposed surrogacy regulation bill second thing that you have to do is break this particular topic into different components there will be definitions there will be conditions of surrogacy and there will be restrictions on surrogacy now what you do is you have to provide for and against arguments on each part whether you support the definition or you don't support the definition whether you whether the conditions are good for surrogacy the prescribed conditions for surrogacy are good justified or they are not justified and whether the restrictions that are imposed on surrogacy whether you support them if you support them why whether you do not support them then tell why not so what you are doing is ek bade se topic ko aap components mein break karte ho aur har component ka aap critical analysis kar rahe ho for and against argument in the conclusion either you will support the surrogacy regulation bill or you will oppose it but at the same time in a very mild manner कैसे अगर आप सपोज बिल को सपोर्ट कर रहे हो तो बोलो कि इट इज अ गुड पीस ऑफ लेजिस्लेशन हाउ एवर देर आर मेनी नेगेटिव और नेगेटिव कॉन्सिक्वेंसिस दैट मे कम अप विच नीड टू बी क्योर्ड या विच नीड टू बी प्रिवेंटेड सो दिस इज वॉट इज बेसिकली नॉन बाय द टर्म दैट यू हैव टू टेक अ कंक्लूजन और यू हैव टू टेक अ पोजिशन वाइल कंक्लूडिंग बट इन अ वेरी माइल्ड मैनर सो दिस इज द क्रिटिकल एनालिसिस नाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द सेकेंड डायरेक्टिव दैट इज evaluate evaluate is basically a quantitative evaluation that is what is quantitative you are not giving it an subjective evaluation it is a objective evaluation and anything that is objective is always evidence based you are evaluating something and commenting about the uh, evaluation that you have done that evaluation should not be subjective in your opinion or in something no you have to provide a evidence so any directive that is associated with evaluate you have to provide a quantitative evaluation and being quantitative it should be evidence driven you have to provide evidence for whatever evaluation you are doing all right so evaluate basically want you to provide opinion or verdict with respect to the extent to which you agree or disagree with the arguments or the research finding of the question all right what it is it is actually provisioning of your opinion or verdict with respect to the extent to which arguments or research findings you agree or you disagree with so you will always see that this question will contain an argument that needs to be evaluated it will contain a research finding that needs to be evaluated now there are two circumstances that may happen either you will agree either you will agree with the research finding or you will agree with the argument or you will disagree with the argument in both the cases your evidences should not be driven subjectively your evidences should rest in some academic source all right that makes this question highly academic any question that starts with the directive evaluate it need to be provided evidences and evidences should come from academic sources and that increases the academic question of your answer you will have to mention the reports you will have to mention the sources of your arguments and your evidences to which to some extent you agree or to some extent you don't agree now how to better understand this directive let us see a question which is a quite contemporary question and the question reads evaluate government of india's effort to curb the recent slowdown in indian economy the question is evaluate government of india's effort to curb the recent slowdown in indian economy this is a argument based question it is same as argument whether these particular reforms will bring a change in the economic slowdown scenario or not either you will take a position yes they will or they will not or you will take a position to some extent they may and to some extent they will not in both the cases provide the argument and when you are providing the argument you will have to provide the source of your argument it cannot be subjectively coming from your own intelligence it is perfectly fine but the source has to be mentioned ki this report of the government has mentioned that if we go for relaxation of the fdi norms it can curb the economic slowdown to this extent all right so that shows that yes you have studied the topic in totality 
if you will not mention the sources and you just give non evidence based evaluation that is qualitative assessment and that will be the answer to the directive assessment and not evaluate and you will not be given the adequate marks that you deserve so summing up evaluation is simply a academic question in which you have to either agree to some extent or disagree to some extent and, and in both the cases provide the evidences for making this particular stand if you agree to some extent why provide the evidences if you don't agree to some extent why provide the evidences so without mentioning the reports without mentioning the sources without giving the credibility to your arguments you will not be compensated adequately so these are the two very very important directives from upsc point of view you write paper 1 paper 2 paper 3 and also paper 4 critically analyze and evaluate directives will be found in plenty of questions i hope these board directives are quite clear to you in the next video we are going to take up another very important directives so keep tuned to this platform that's all from my side have a great day ahead take care bye